The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft host. Once more into the breach do we go, dear friends, as we start the show off S&P at uh, 2035 on the cash off 12 points. Uh, a little less than 2.5 billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. And uh, what do we got out here? Certainly looks like the market was in a funk uh, to begin the day. Of course, uh, had a little bit of terrorism ranging uh, out. And uh, I thought we would probably go past that earlier in the day. It seems like it's going to be one of these things that goes later in the day. Of course, a lot of good earnings out of uh, tech stocks and even out of the retail sector uh, that was given up for dead. It looks like uh, I'm playing a little bit of whack-a-mole out here because uh, even Walmart popped up out of the hole today uh, saying that they had some good sales. Uh, others, too, we'll get to them. But uh, not enough juice uh, either yesterday or today. Uh, we get into next Monday, we're going to start seeing the volume really start to uh, go into summer trading levels. That's not a good thing if you're trying to push the market down. Um, saw a lot of bogus news stories floating around, some just totally harebrained. Maybe if we get time, we'll talk about those. Uh, and uh, what else can you say? Just a, a day down less than 12 points on the S&P cash. Uh, no biggie, not the kind of juice that you need. And, of course, expiration going in till tomorrow. I have not seen the uh, the uh, option market makers blink. It did not look like they threw the towel in today, which suggests that uh, the 2060 to 2080 range is still open for the S&P cash tomorrow, uh, at least as the prediction uh, by... Uh, options and option market makers. Um, I couldn't help but go out and uh, buy a lot of 10 cent options today for expiration tomorrow. Uh, had a few in the newsletter. Some were so thin that they didn't make it. So um, I picked up a few of those, but uh, busy buying uh, out of the money calls today. I will either have a small loss tomorrow or a huge win if we get back up to that uh, 2060 area, which is where I would be selling as we went across um, for most times. Maybe we get a little bit better news. Of course, uh, yesterday I was opining, and uh, that does not mean pining. It means opining uh, about uh, how, you know, we've seen the Treasury come in every morning and uh, whack the dollar down. We did not see that today. They stood back, 95.28, uh, up 20 cents. And, of course, uh, that put a hurting on gold. And um, I don't know what else you can say about it. But uh, it's kind of interesting to hear Andy Heck in the Tom O'Brien show yesterday that I hosted uh, say that he could see gold back to 1200 bucks. Um, anytime I see a whether it's a stock or a commodity, just go on a binge and just up, 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 up. Uh, generally, the retractions on those are bigger than most people would like. You've got to have a little back and fill um, or you quickly exhaust uh, the ability uh, for the market to uh, handle it. You get everybody long uh, who's left. And uh, that's why you get a little bit bigger retraces. I still think that FCX uh, $7 range is open. And uh, hopefully when it gets there, I will be buying. Uh, for the longer term, um, some stocks have actually come back down to levels where I wanted to buy them for a long time. They've got down there. They've had incredibly light volume or no volume in some cases. And I just felt like, uh, man, it was time to buy while there was blood in the streets. 
uh, we've been buying in the uh, Tech Insider, the longer term, uh, on some of the forgotten and fallen angels. Uh, but uh, picked up a couple in the last week. I think we're going to be doing well with those over the summer. Uh, but yes, uh, got a couple emails here already. Yes, I think that 2060, 2065 to 2080 level is certainly open for expiration tomorrow. I don't know what they're going to throw at this thing, but uh, I did not see the option market makers blink. Uh, they normally have a better bead on uh, the market than just about anybody else. So I'm willing to sit on my hands. Uh, I think I've got some big winners actually added to some of them today. Uh, so I brought my uh, uh, my cost down a little bit, but uh, eh, we'll see what happens. 2038. Now we're just down 10 points on the S&P cash, but uh, eh, I may have been a few hours early. But uh, at 10 cents, what am I going to be off? 10 cents? Unless they gave them away for free, I'll be okay. So uh, eh, looking for that, hoping. Uh, but uh, I will either have a small loss or a big unbelievably huge win tomorrow. He's got money coming out the wazoo. What do we have? Money out the wazoo. Yes, uh, if we pop up tomorrow, I will have money out the wazoo. In the meantime, we come to you pretty much each day at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And, uh, eh. We'll get on to uh, the business at hand today and get the party started. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1935, somebody called T.E. Lawrence dies. He's known to the world of Lawrence of Arabia. Dies as a retired Royal Air Force mechanic living under assumed name. The legendary war hero, author, and archaeological scholar succumbed to injuries suffered in a motorcycle accident, trying to avoid two kids riding in the middle of the road. And, of course, the moral of that story is bicyclists shouldn't be allowed on the road. We all know it. Put them on the trail. We have trails all over the place, yet they uh, clog up. The, uh, high, uh, the uh, regular roads make people late for work. And, of course, on weekends, nothing like trying to get the beach but being stuck behind a mile and a half of traffic. Anyway, ride your bikes. Just don't clog the traffic lanes. Or kill T.E. Lawrence, either. Lawrence uh, studied architecture and uh, archaeology and made a trip to the Ottoman uh, Empire. I always thought that that was the footstool that went with your chair. But uh, no, but uh, you got to think that they were, isn't that where they came from? No, oh, just a thought. Uh, of course, uh, he went a trip to Syria and Palestine in 1909 and 1911. He won a fellowship to join an expedition excavating the Hittite settlement in the Euphrates River. Worked there for three years in his free time, traveled and learned Arabic. In 1914, he explored the Sinai near the frontier of the Ottoman-controlled Arabia and British-controlled Egypt. The maps Lawrence and his associates made had immediate strategic value on the outbreak of war between Britain and the Ottoman Empire. All I can hear when I hear that is a empire of little footstools. But uh, on this day, and of course, the, one of the best movies ever, Lawrence of Arabia. David Lean at his absolute best. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, takes your phone calls now, now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 and lastly on this day in 1962 a Marilyn Monroe sang a sultry edition of happy birthday uh, and uh We'll move on. But, uh, man, if you have never seen David Lean's movie uh, on Lawrence of Arabia, especially seen it in a theater in a 70 millimeter and widescreen um, or on probably, what, a 200-inch widescreen, big screen in your house, uh, man, it is an epic and still stands up incredibly well today. Uh, one of the best movies ever made. Uh, Google has its big I.O. going on. This is when some of the conferences really start firing up. And uh, they're really getting into uh, the personal assistance, trying to catch up to Amazon's uh, foray and that. It's gotten very high marks. But uh, uh, the world is starting to circle the artificial intelligence and machine learning as the big movers in the future. And I've covered that fairly extensively in the Tech Insider. If you're interested in that, you can always go to the front page of TFNN and check out investment newsletters. I've got a couple of new positions that maybe you still have time to get in on the ground floor. Uh, we're going to go to Ed in Austin, Texas. How are you doing today, Ed? Good. I'm looking for Intel. How low can it go? Uh, Intel lim limbo, huh? Just how low can this thing go? Um, you know, the $28.38 uh, is kind of where I've been thinking this thing is going to pull back to. Um, they've had a couple of missteps, uh, but still a preeminent company in this space. Uh, I think people really give this company a lot uh, more of a rap than they probably should. Um, but uh, hang on just a second. Let me get a little longer one out here. Um, 2768 is the February 11th low, and 2478 is the other low. Uh, 
Energy is actually probably a little bit more than you would like. So 27.68 is probably a very likely uh, low where you, if it came with lighter volume, um, maybe you could see something. Uh, I don't think as uh, a lot of people really kind of saying this thing uh, has a horrible future. I don't get it. Um, I think that they come back in the second half, uh, mostly uh, by selling a great deal of those uh, new uh, chips for servers that include the Altera parts uh, along with uh, memory. So I'm thinking that maybe it isn't so much as a price as when, but I'm thinking maybe mid-summer is when this thing is going to make some kind of low that you would want to buy. What about, is it following the same footsteps as MU? Uh, a little less. MU is a straight play, right? Intel has well, both the chip business. It's got memory business. It's got uh, a lot of different things as it's in. Okay. Hey, so, could you so do some it, research? Uh, MU is really called, a, go ahead. No, there's a company called WATT. They, they're creating wireless stuff. Like yes. you can put your phone near the computer and it will charge your phone. Can you tell me, since you're so smart, if that company will take off? Uh, probably not. Everybody and their dog is uh, in this. Well, in fact, have... Apple Apple just bought uh, or just uh, hired uh, 50 new people in their division for wireless, wireless charging. Well, can you tell uh, me if this company will take off? It's W-A-T-T. Yeah, I don't see. I think somebody's called me about this one before, and I never really thought that much about it. it if you can. It's a pretty cool chip. Tell me if you think it has a future, if it's like the Intel of the future. Doubt it. Can you do some research and tell me, talk about it one day? Uh, I think we looked at it. Uh, I'm pretty sure we looked at this for, for a while. And I just, the, the problem is that wireless charging goes back to Tesla. So there aren't uh -huh. a lot of protections and patents that you can do on any of this stuff. It's all uh -huh. fairly well known. Okay. There's not a lot of tricks or anything else to be had in this business uh, other than the engineering of actually putting it in a device like an iPhone. That's yeah. where every, that's where everything is. And uh, Samsung already has this stuff. Uh, all the other people have it. Uh, Energizer, the battery company, is trying to set a standard. Um, I just don't, I don't see enough tricks in that mm -hmm. kind of technology uh, or unknowns. Normally, you want to have some kind of barrier to entry, like patents or something like that. When I looked at okay. this before, they really didn't have anything that, to me, would stand up. So, will they do business? Can they be an okay company? Yes. Are they going to be uh, something like the chip company that goes in the GoPro? No. Where's GoPro going? Uh, I think up a little bit into tomorrow, but uh, other than that, uh, probably just going to meander around the the ten dollar level for a while until they figure something out. They've they got a couple like of new pro. They got a couple of new products that needs that need to come out, and maybe they after that like comes. like BlackBerry Pager. Remember that company with that company Rim? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's got its own set of problems too, but uh, hmm. uh, what are you, you are you talking right now? Yeah, no, I'm saying like uh, GoPro will probably go bankrupt. Um, unclear. They got a ton of cash in that IPO. They still have a ton of cash. Um, it could take a couple of years before we know. Um, what about they a could, GoPro TV channel? Doubt it. Yeah, that yeah. whole idea that they're a media company. I think Apple you tried that phone. too. What's that? You can use your phone for what GoPro does. You don't really need that. Yeah, yeah. I think it was, uh, GoPro probably... My guess is, I don't know if it goes bankrupt. I, I assume they sell out to another company, but not at a premium. Um, mm -hmm. They've released their first new product in a while. I think it was uh, Friday last week, which is like a fifth, uh, ten or fifteen thousand uh, dollar thing for virtual reality. It's a three hundred and sixty degree uh, camera. So mm -hmm. they've at least got that. Unclear how well the sales are going to be on it, uh, but uh, to me. The thing they have is they've been working on this drone product for a while. Maybe they could get something out of that that would move them back up. Are they ever going back up to 100 bucks? Uh, I think the odds are slim and none. Could it get back up to 20 maybe? 
Uh, it could be with the right products, but very tough to figure them out. They're not, you know, you don't hear a lot of leaks about what they're doing. Uh, they are working on stuff, and two, they have an absolute god-awful amount of money that they raised in the IPO, and it's going to take a long time to run them bankrupt. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Okay. Bye. 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 Uh, anyway, um, eh, what were we talking about? You can be uh, like Ed and give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, we were talking about Google, the big I.O., um, Unclear whether or not this is going to be a big money maker for Google. They've been closing down a lot of the non-profitable business. They sold off the robotics, uh, but I think they're getting back to the core of being what Google is, and uh, the artificial intelligence part of that probably a great deal. When we come back, uh, Goldman Sachs getting its uh, hand caught in the cookie jar yesterday, and uh, then we're going to move on to stocks that have moved wildly over the last 24 hours. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, kind of uh, interestingly enough, uh, there was uh, some uh, news out on Tesla yesterday morning, uh, and uh, you, it's kind of very interesting to see how during expiration some of these things work out. But uh, Tesla needed, uh, or at least uh, I suspect that uh, option market makers wanted 
Tesla up a bit yesterday uh, to get something done. And of course, uh, probably one hand not uh, talking to the other hand at Goldman Sachs because you have a bunch of people out there actually uh, um, actively trying to manipulate the stock uh, for expiration, get it up a little bit. Uh, they'd written uh, probably too many puts on the thing and it was uh, move it up a little bit. And of course, um, little did they know that the other side of the business uh, was getting ready to push out a billion or maybe two billion, depends on which article you read, uh, for Tesla's expansion. Everybody knew that the uh, new stock was coming, that it happened on the same day, uh, pretty much uh, egg on the face for Tesla. After the bell, when that news came out last night, uh, Tesla went down to about $202. Um, knowing that uh, uh, the long arm of the law would probably be coming after uh, Goldman Sachs on uh, this uh, um, three-hand, what do they call it, three-hand money, one-hand money, uh, missing-hand money, uh, got uh, to... Uh, buying it after hours uh it's now up actually a buck 53 today but uh i suspect that uh now that uh tesla they're supposed to actually coordinate this stuff uh why there's supposed to be a wall between the two divisions there's uh, allowed some person to make sure that these crossovers don't happen and it did uh but uh yeah there was more than enough out here to make me think that uh what uh Goldman was doing, um, and especially the news last night, uh, was uh, a quick way to make uh, six, seven, eight bucks on a stock in a day. And, uh, you know, when we see Phil, uh, Phil Mick Mickelson uh, actually uh, getting the uh, treatment uh, that, uh, uh, what's the other Shark Tank investor dude that went through the, uh, went through the same SEC stuff where they went after him, but he fought it and showed that they were uh, some lying skunks on the deal. Uh, trying to remember, um, yeah, what was his name? Um, he's the Mavericks guy. Yeah, Mark Cuban, thanks. Uh, Mark Cuban fought it. I have a feeling that they thought uh, that uh, Mickelson would not fight it, would cost him more money uh, than just to shut up about it uh, from his endorsement deals. Uh, and uh, Cuban... No endorsements, deals, so he could fight it. I think they're figuring out a better way to go out there and, uh, as uh, you said, <laughs> give them the treatment for uh, something that is very uh, tough to uh, prove. But uh, Goldman Sachs and uh, Tesla, pretty much a, uh, uh, a lot of egg on their face. But I suspect that someone called from uh, the top desk picked up the phone and said, you better make sure that Tesla's uh, higher tomorrow and not, not lower. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of what we got, but, uh, whether or not, uh, we see a great deal out there, um, after hours, did they go ahead and just buy all that stock? And, uh, you know, uh, the question is who watches Goldman Sachs at the SEC? Nobody. If you want a job with them after you leave, I guess that's the answer to that question. Um, what else is going on out here? Had some uh, questions. I'll try to get this in and then get into charts here. But I had a lot of uh, questions over the last week. I told everybody I would try to get to it before tomorrow since I think tomorrow will be yet another big day. I want to get to it now. Um, we've had a, a couple people in the den and a couple more people in the last week email me saying that they've gotten this ransomware issue done. Uh, to them, uh, the company, one of the, I, I don't want to call them a company, the uh, bunch of hackers that put one of them together have shut it down and put the uh, actual key to decrypt all of them uh, on their website called the Tesla decoder. Nothing to do with Tesla, the car company. Uh, but uh, you can decode it now. There are companies that have already broken the encryption uh, for this, and you can send them your drive. If it's not this particular company, they'll decrypt it for about 500 bucks. But uh, most people uh, use wireless uh, at their trading station. And if you have an account of any size, uh, you are a prime target for these folks. But uh, 
saw an article that said that a great deal, especially of these um, kind of hacks, have to do with people uh, breaking the Wi-Fi of not only traders but other folks too. And uh, looking into it, literally if you have a Wi-Fi system open, um, a hacker that drives by your place or has access to a Wi-Fi uh, in, in, that could hook up to yours uh, can easily hack your system. Um, there's only one way around it. There's a current standard called AC. And if you make everything only work on the AC wireless standard, uh, they do not have equipment, at least today, uh, that can hack that. But almost everybody has stuff, and they leave it open for the B series, the C, um, and G uh, versions of Wi-Fi. All of those have been incredibly hacked. Uh, in fact, uh, for about 50 bucks, uh, you can buy some small little PCs that will do this job for you and hack into somebody's Wi-Fi in a matter of minutes or if not, at worst case, in hours. So there is no way to defend yourself if you have a Wi-Fi device and you're using some of the older standards. Uh, the latest one is AC. Uh, you need to go in and if you're going to use uh, this, make sure that you turn off all the older versions of Wi-Fi or anybody driving by your house will instantly own your Wi-Fi and by extension, own your PC. But uh, if you're defending a lot of cash in some trading account, the last thing I think you want is somebody in your PC. Uh, let's get to charts already in progress over most of the market. Uh, we're off 12 points on the S&P cash, 2.7 billion shares. So volume is kind of slowed down a little bit. Bed, bath, and beyond, uh, not a whole lot in there. Oh, what I wanted to look at was some of these that were moving. Uh, Alcoa down a little bit today, but it's recovered most of its little dip out here. I won't say a lot in this one. Another one uh, that we've seen uh, a great deal of recovery on is Advanced Auto Parts. Uh, this went down to the previous low, did not break it. February 11th low came in at 131.59. That had two and a half million shares. You already have 4.4 million shares. So you have to dislike this. You do have to like uh, the return, though, and uh, this, uh, although down on heavy volume, opening with a get big gap down, pretty much refilling it. The energy uh, from the March 30th high down to this low today uh, was not any more than the February 11th low uh, to that same March 30th high. So you have to say that this did come back down with lighter volume. It did get into that candle with higher volume, which you dislike, but uh, not as bad as it could be. Maybe that's the best way to sum it up. Um, surprise, surprise, surprise. A retailer going higher in the teen, in the teen sector. We'll be back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're looking to discover a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, don't miss out on the Market Safe Commodity Solution CD from EverBank. This is the second running of their popular five-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD, which gives you exposure to eight equally weighted commodities, including WTI crude oil, gold, silver, copper, nickel, soybeans, corn, and sugar. With annual pricing caps of 70% per component, you could earn up to 70% upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There's no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this indexed CD. 
Don't miss out. Take advantage of this financial resource designed to grow with the times. The May 19th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member. FDIC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed Taz proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Anyway, um, had a couple come in from the email circuit. Mike from uh, Colorado wanted to look at uh, Nat K. West. Uh, asked me if I saw anything in this as a possible buy. Well, this thing just uh, blew through its February 11th low with more volume already today. Looks like it will close below it. Uh, so I don't see anything there. It's going to take a while to get that uh, to change any kind of opinion on it. OCLR, which is Oclero. Um, you know, this thing had a gap. It filled it at 386 on March 8th. Uh, did so with fairly heavy uh, volume of 13 million shares. Um, I think you need that 386 tested on this one so far. Energy is about the same on the way back down. Kind of a messy chart, though, so I don't, I wouldn't be jumping up and down to buy it. But, uh, Eh, what can you say? I re you know, this really thing looks to me like if it gets down to 386, it's going to need some level of consolidation before we go on. Question about Cisco and their earnings. Um, I continue to think that uh, there are problems with Cisco. Um, probably the reason, the last reason that they're doing any good um, has to do with, uh, let's get back to Cisco here. Uh, has to do with uh, them actually, yeah, come on, has to do with, maybe I clicked too many times. Come on, Cisco. Okay, there we go. Something's going on out here. I think my, um, I think my, uh, come on. Yeah. Um, I think uh, this is insane. Everything's gone nuts. My mouse pointer's randomly clicking around there. I replaced the battery in it. Maybe my trackball is going nuts. Hang on just a second. Uh, anyway, Cisco up on fairly decent volume, didn't break out of its trading range. The last high was April 1st out here. Uh, to, to 37, yeah, 37 million shares is pretty good, more than the April 1st high. Uh, Cisco has one big problem, and that is that they do make commodities for the most part. Uh, they may make the best commodity, uh, but the problem is that the only real reason that they're probably still at these values is no one can use a Chinese router or one from Taiwan because they're all virused up. Uh, this has become kind of a protected market. The thing would be whether or not you can or someone does come in and go up against Cisco, maybe even a U.S. manufacturer. And, uh, you know, their, motor, uh, their uh, routers are extremely con expensive compared to what the rest of the world is paying now. Uh, but, uh, the, of course, the issue is to keep uh, Chinese routers out of the marketplace uh, with their viruses that come uh, 
That's standard equipment. Of course, uh, Cisco routers that come with viruses if you live in China. So it has become this divided country, but uh, I don't see a great deal more for them. Uh, but unless someone else gets into this business and starts uh, uh, building enterprise routers, uh, they probably can still hang out in this trading range. But uh, for a while, that's it. Uh, one of the retailers uh, actually doing well today is Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, and uh, as we look at them, um, nice little pop up here. Some of these um, have just ended up being, uh, for the most part, dead cat bounces. Energy on most of these still was down. Uh, Dick's just didn't do as horrible as everybody else said. But, of course, you had very good sell signals up here at the top. Uh, the test of uh, 4806 uh, that had 2.7 million shares was tested with uh, 1.7 million shares. It went above it. It closed back below the same day. Uh, so you had a valid sell signal. It's come down with uh, more energy than it came up with. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes you just get ahead of a stock, and it looked to me like this market did. Same thing in Walmart. Everybody just probably a little bit too pessimistic when it came in. A nice bounce in Walmart. Um, a lot of the key indicators that you go through uh, for retail, uh, turns, that kind of stuff, did get better. So they're running their business a little bit better. Uh, is there a great change for Walmart? Uh, probably not. Still in this trading range. But uh, I think there's still enough people short this thing to get into the 71 or 72 range maybe next week. Uh, let's see what else we have at Dick's. Uh, FCX, let's take a quick look at that. I had a couple of emails about that already. Uh, like I said, I still think that one of the big problems was just too much, uh, too soon. Um, a little bounce in uh, Freeport out here today, but uh, still think so far that at least you test the April 7th low, which is $8.76. Uh, I suspect that you really could get back to this gap at 7 bucks without much problems if the dollar continues to stay higher. And I think that's where the next buy point would be if you want the best risk reward. Uh, to, 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 what else do we have out here? A lot of gold stocks uh, on the pullback today, but I don't think they're selling, saying much on that. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. L Brands has come back to a long-term gap down. Uh, this thing is uh, pre-announced, post-announced, uh, and uh, even said that the sky is falling uh, down to 60 bucks. Of course, uh, those uh, people make and are Victoria's secret, and I know her secret. So it's not actually a secret, is it? Um, but uh, just one thought. Uh, this gap goes back to the 7th of August 2014, not a huge one, uh, 2.8 million shares. So we come back and see 7.2 million shares. It's broken that uh, last sign of strength when this thing started really moving up around that 2014, August 2014 area. And uh, I think you've come down, you've come down with heavier volume. Uh, I don't know what's going on in the uh, ladies undies business, but uh, it doesn't look good. I mean, the ads do. Uh, business, probably not so much. Uh, to, to what else do we have out here? Perry, one of my favorite companies. It was one of the ones I bought, I think it was less than two bucks in that uh, March 2009. Uh, it was one of the companies that actually tested a previous low on 10% of the volume uh, on those March lows. I had one idea, and that was to find the stocks that had tested previous lows on the lightest volume I could find. CSIQ he was one, Perry Ellis was another. I remember most of them most days uh, just because they were such huge winners out here. But uh, love both of these uh, stocks back then. Uh, they've become more traders now. So, But uh, pretty a light volume stock up on uh, earnings. Again, another retailer with a little bit better than bad news. And uh, yeah, that's all you need these days. RIO, which is Rio Tinto, um, opened a little lower, back kind of a little higher. Um, been waiting for this to come back to the March 29th low for a signal. 
Uh, you would have liked to see a little less volume out here today. You got two big gaps. You can almost make this thing a three gap play, uh, which would take you back down to 23 bucks. Um, energy on the way down, probably a little bit more than you would like, saying maybe a little consolidation for this one. We'll be back after this short timeout. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Anyway, uh, we've got uh, eh, not much going on here as we get uh, closer to the close uh, off. 13 and a half points on the S&P cash, 2.8 billion shares is again, not a lot of volume. I'm expecting maybe some news or a surprise tomorrow to get this market up. But uh, as I said, uh, I'm mostly uh, for that move uh, in, uh, in dime penny kind of options in case there is that surprise, which I think is likely, but not definite. So uh, and take the least amount of risk. Uh, for the most amount of award. Urban Outfitters up today. Again, like most of these, uh, have come back down. Um, Energy's pretty good. Uh, just um, uh, all the other companies reporting before them kind of moved them down, set the bar low. And, of course, uh, you have uh, far too many people shorts jumping onto these thinking that they're going to blow apart into earnings. Normally, when you get to the last uh, quarter of earnings in a earning season. If they've all been good, everybody's long, and they tend to overshoot, and uh, the st those stocks come off. If you're very bearish, 
during an earning, earning season, you end up uh, having everybody uh, short um, before uh, anything going on, and that becomes problematic. So eh, just a great deal, I think, of these retailers, a lot of people getting way ahead of the movement in these uh, stocks. Uh, they may still go that way, but uh, when everybody gets on one side, uh, the market's more than willing uh, to run you out for a week or so the other way. Uh, Vail was down a little bit today, had some emails about this one. I don't see a great deal to be made from this today. Uh, Total, TNK, uh, there was some other ones out here I wanted to get to, if I could remember which ones. It was uh, MTB, maybe that was it. Mobile Telesystems, it's down a little bit. Uh, MNRO, this is the one. Monroe. Muffler and Brake Company. Um, you know, I had a couple of companies uh, that didn't do so well in automotive uh, repair. Of course, uh, this is the other one out here. Fairly decent uh, slam down on this one. This one did not fill its gap. It's uh, got 1.7 million shares already, but back into the trading range. But the January 20th low, 59.66, uh, solidly uh, smashed on that. And... Uh, the auto parts stores, uh, some of these new cars actually finally starting to put a dent in uh, used parts sales. Uh, but uh, I think uh, there's, and then with the new cars, uh, not maybe not selling as much. Maybe there's an opportunity after this summer pullback in some of these to get back in. But this one um, still needs a little bit more to get into the May 21st, 2015 low at 55.38. I'm not a big investor in uh, Monroe Muffler and Brake Company, but uh, you can see what they did. Certainly, uh, if you bought earlier in the day, not a bad day trade out here, but uh, that can be a bunch of those things. Uh, see if there's anything else out here. Flowers.com. Uh, this one had a lot of interday movement, opened much lower and moved back higher. Eh, kind of thinking that we'll get a little bit of this more tomorrow, and that is uh, just probably too many people on one side of the fence. Uh, pushed it down fairly hard, came back. But this thing is and continued to be uh, in a trading range, and uh, there are a lot of stocks like this. It's going to be very tough to kick these things out on expiration day. A lot of stocks uh, kind of set up, though, for some big moves. Tomorrow, we'll watch those. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. Cover when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.